So Sandy needed help passing her two FTCE exams and within one month of using 240, she was prepped and ready. Reviews like these make us so happy because they let us know that we're helping teachers and soon to be teachers accomplish their goals. My name is Terry and I work with 240 to help people just like you pass their certification exams. This video is gonna prepare you for the mathematics portion of the FTCE Pre-K-3. This test is for anyone who wants to teach pre-kindergarten through third grade in the state of Florida. And this video is gonna cover three things what's on the test and how to study for it, the most important concepts to master, and we're gonna walk through a few practice questions. The FTCE Pre-K-3 exam is split into four subtests, developmental knowledge, language arts and reading, mathematics, and science. Each contains a certain amount of selected response questions, but for now, we're gonna focus on mathematics, which has 45 questions in all. And guess what? No calculators allowed. But they do give you a formula sheet to use, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. Ready to see what's on the mathematics subtest? Stay tuned. Now, the FTCE Pre K 3 mathematics subtest consists of five competencies. You'll need to have knowledge of mathematics instruction, algebraic thinking, number concepts and operations, measurement and data and geometric and spatial concepts. Each competency is worth between 15 and 30% of your exam. We'll discuss some of the most important things to know with each competency. Let's start with the building blocks of how to teach math and we'll take it from the top with competency one. Well, this section of your exam covers how to teach math, how to incorporate math into other subjects and how to assess math. And since it makes up 23% of your exam, you'll likely see about 10 questions from this section. Expect to see questions about math skill development, appropriate skills for each grade level, and types of assessment. Now let's pick one of those and zoom in on it. How about math skill development? You'll need to know the three basic stages of learning progression in math. And that includes how students move through each of those stages. First up is the concrete stage. In this stage, you introduce and model a concept using physical manipulatives, like counting blocks or fraction tiles. Then we move on to the representational stage. This is where we replace the physical manipulatives with pictures and or symbols. This is sometimes called the symbolic or pictorial stage. And finally, we reach the abstract stage, where we can replace the symbols with proper numbers and mathematical notations. Now, let me break that down just a little more for you. So, if a teacher is introducing multiplication, students may begin in the concrete stage by using square counters to physically create a multiplication array of columns and rows. Then, they may move into representations by drawing their arrays or counting by factors on a number line. Finally, they can work abstractly with pure numbers. Now, if these distinctions aren't totally concrete and you're still feeling a little abstract, you know what to do. Check out our 240 study guide. There's a link in the bio below just for you. All right, one competency down. Now let's keep cruising. Let's skip ahead to competency three, since it takes up the largest portion of your exam. Don't worry, I won't forget about competency two. I promise. Competency three covers number concepts. It's worth about 30% of your exam, so expect to see around 14 questions on this competency. Be prepared for questions about skip counting, place value, and number lines. You'll also need to know about fraction models, including being able to identify equivalent fractions and whether a given fraction is greater than or less than one. Now, did your heart stop a little bit when I mentioned fractions? Don't worry, I got you. Actually, let's say hi to Abigail. She's one of the many 240 tutors you'll see in our 240 videos. She's got you. Unit fractions are fractions that have a one in the numerator. For example, one half, one seventh, and one eighth are all unit fractions. If the numerators are the same, smaller denominators indicate larger fractions. A good example of this would be sharing one pizza with two people versus four people. When we divide it among four people, each person gets fewer slices. This trend holds true for any numerator. 
For example, 4 over 4 is smaller than 4 over 1. If the denominators are the same, larger numerators indicate larger fractions. Continuing with the pizza analogy, imagine splitting one pizza into fourths. Since three slices is more than one slice, three-fourths of a pizza is more than one-fourth. So remember, if the numerators are the same, the smaller the denominator, the larger the fraction. If the denominators are the same, the larger the numerator, the larger the fraction. Couldn't have said it better myself, Abigail. Like what you saw, we have plenty more where that came from inside of our study guides. You can subscribe whenever you're ready, but for now, let's move on to competency two. See, I told you I wouldn't forget. I got you. Competency two covers algebra. And hang on, I know that's another word that can strike fear in the hearts of millions. But remember, this is a test for teaching pre-kindergarten through third grade, so it may not be as bad as you think. But you definitely want to know what you're talking about here because this competency takes up another 16% of your test. And that's about seven questions. You're going to need to be able to deal with equalities and inequalities, apply function rules, and identify different types of sequences. Now let's dig into that one a little more. A sequence is a list of numbers, shapes, or symbols that go in a specific order. Most sequences also follow some sort of pattern. So in general, we're looking at three types of sequences. First up, you've got the arithmetic sequences, and these are usually the easiest to figure out. They have a common difference between terms, meaning you add or subtract the same number every time you go from one term to the next. In this example, we add five to get from one term to the next. Then you've got geometric sequences. Now these are a little bit trickier, but I got faith in you. In these, you need to either multiply or divide by the same number to go from one term to the next. In this example, you multiply by three each time. And then you've got the trickiest one. And guess what? They're even called complex patterns because they're, well, complex. In a complex pattern, you're going to have to identify two separate patterns. So looking at the number sequence, six, two, seven, three, eight and so on. To go from six to two, you have to subtract by four. Then to go up to seven, you need to add by five. And you go back and forth between those actions. Subtract four, add five, subtract four, and so on and so on. Now that's just a small piece of this competency. There's many more pieces to the competency puzzle. To put them all together, go to 242tutoring.com, subscribe to our study guides. Ready to mosey on over to competency four? Let's go. Competency four focuses on measurement and data. It takes up about 15% of your exam, so expect to see about seven questions on this topic. And when we say measurement, we're talking about way more than just using a ruler. Okay, measurements using centimeters and inches are definitely in there. They're just not the only things in there. You need to know how to measure and teach children to measure length, time, and money, just to name a few. Then you need to calculate values using those measurements. We're talking about counting how much change you should be given, how much time has passed, or even area, perimeter, and volume of basic shapes. Now here's some good news. Remember that reference sheet I mentioned at the beginning of the video? Here's where it comes in handy. The reference sheet provided by the state of Florida includes all the formulas you'll need. So you don't have to memorize them, just need to know how to apply them. And remember, that's just half of this competency. There's still a bunch to know about data collection and analysis. You're going to need to know how to create and interpret basic graphs and plots. Want another walkthrough from one of our amazing 240 tutors? I thought so. What if you need to see how data changes over time? For example, here is a data set that shows how many inches of rain fell each day over a period of nine days it isn't immediately obvious how the rainfall changed over time. Instead, we can plot the data in a line graph. Line graphs use line segments to connect data points. They allow us to see how data changes over time. A line graph may also have multiple lines that compare multiple sets of data on the same graph. We've got so many more videos just like that to help you prepare for your exam. So if you like what you see, use the link in the description below. We've got one competency to go. 
Last stop is geometric and spatial concepts, which is just a fancy way of saying shapes and where they are in space. Now this last competency will show up in about seven questions on your exam. Here you'll need to know the basic 2D and 3D shapes and their properties, what it means to be symmetrical or congruent, and some basic shape vocabulary like line, angle, and plane. Now let me walk you through an example I've seen time and time again. You might be shown a shape and be asked to determine if it's symmetric. If you can draw a line through the center of the shape to create two mirror images, it is symmetric. If you can't, it's not. We've made it through all the competencies, but that was just a little taste of each one. If you're still a little unsure about any of this, use the 240 study guide. It'll save you a lot of time, a lot of money, and a lot of worry. And remember, drop us a comment below. We love hearing about how we can help you out more. Now that we've gone through a big concept in each competency, let's take a look at some practice questions to show you how they'll appear on the test. If you want a lot of practice questions, you can click the free practice test below. When you're done, you'll get a score report to show you how well you did. Then you can subscribe to the 240 study guide to get hundreds of practice questions so you're confident in your test. And did you know that the 240 study guide has a money back guarantee that you'll pass? Now for the questions. Remember in mathematics instruction, when I talked about moving students through different stages of math education? Let's look at how that's reflected in a question. In a first grade class, students have been working with manipulative materials and pictures as they investigate the concept of addition. Through both formative and summative assessments, the teacher has determined that the students are ready to move to more abstract, pencil and paper, ways to represent addition. How should she begin this process? The best answer is this one. This choice builds on pictorial models by adding spaces below the model to record the symbolic representation for each step. This is the next logical step in learning to write additional problems symbolically. Now let's look at a question from the second competency, algebraic thinking. Remember all those sequences I taught you about? Which of these sequences below is arithmetic? An arithmetic sequence is one where the same amount is added or subtracted from each term to the next. The only one that meets this criteria is B. This sequence has a constant difference of four, since each term is four more than the preceding term, making it an arithmetic sequence. Nice, on to competency three. Now I've got to do this to you guys. Let's hit them with some fractions. <laughs> Which of the following principles is demonstrated by the figures below? First thing I notice is that all the figures have the same denominator or the number on the bottom of the fraction. Looking at the shaded areas of each circle and the numbers they match up with, this is the best answer. The denominator remains four throughout the figures. As the numerator decreases, the fraction also decreases. Only two more to go. How about a measurement and data question? A school cafeteria offers five different meals and serves each meal on a set day of the week. A teacher takes a survey among her students of which of the five meals is their favorite. Which of the following should the teacher use to display the results of the survey? A line graph is better suited for data that changes over time. So that choice is out. A histogram and a table with values are better suited for numerical data. So we can eliminate those as well. That leaves us with D. A pie chart is best to show how whole data is divided into parts. A pie chart is a great way to visually depict how many students name each of the five meals as their favorite because it visually divides a whole by percentages. Man, that last question has me wanting some pie. Now I'm gonna have to get me some after this last question. I only got one more to go with geometry and spatial concepts. How many lines of symmetry does the figure below have? Ooh, perfect. I see one line of symmetry right down the middle of this triangle. Shoot, that's too low. Ah, I got it. I can draw the same line of symmetry from each of the three corners like this. So three is the right answer. Now that's just a small sample of practice questions to give you an idea of how these concepts will be assessed on the test. Congrats on finishing the video. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, Leave me a comment below. Don't worry, I can take it. 
240 has helped thousands of teachers pass their certification exams, and we want you to add to that number. Take the next step and subscribe to the 240 Study Guide. There's a link in the description below. It has hours of video so you can watch or listen as you please. It is test aligned so you know precisely what you need to study. And it has hundreds of practice questions so you can be sure that you're ready. And it has a money back guarantee. So click the link below and get started right now.